This lesson covers a new capability in Windows Server 2012 that allows you to clone a domain controller, but only if it's running on Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V. In the past, you could never clone a domain controller. You can create a new domain controller running DC Promo, and it will replicate the content of the database from another domain controller. You could install from media by effectively taking a system state backup of another domain controller and feeding that to the DC Promo process. She could streamline it, but I could never just clone a domain controller. I couldn't run sysprep on an existing domain controller. Well, now in Windows Server 2012, you effectively can. And there's a number of stages to this process. So once again, it must be Windows Server 2012 domain controller, and it must be running on the Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V because it's using that same VM generation ID that I talked about in the previous lesson. The first stage, you have to give permission for a certain domain controller to actually be cloned. So you have to add the domain controllers that you wish to be able to be cloned. So it's a computer object. I'm going to allow this domain controller to be cloned. So you have to grant which ones can be the source of a cloning operation. On that source domain controller you wish to clone, you have to basically put a file in the NTDS folder so that C Windows NTDS that tells it this is a cloning operation. Now a sample for that clone file is provided in C Windows System 32. And this is that sample that's provided. And notice it allows you to give a computer name, the site you want it to be added to, IP settings. And you could then fill these in and then place it in that C Windows NTDS folder. But you have to rename it to just be called DC clone config.xml. So you're basically taking out the sample at the front of that file name. But you don't have to fill in these values. You could exactly take this file, just remove sample, and put it in the C Windows NTDS folder and save it. You would then shut down the domain controller, copy that VHD, and when that copy started up with a new VM, it would see the VM generation ID is different. It would see the presence of this DC clone config file it would look for the values, and because there aren't any, it would just create its own ones. It would create its own computer name, pick a site based on whichever IP configuration it got through DHCP. So it could completely auto-configure if you don't put any values in this file. But you do have to put the file. If you don't put the DC clone config file in the location, and you shut down the VM and copy it and create a new VM, you're then going to have issues on the environment. So you need to make sure you put this DC clone config file in place. So you're going to edit this file. And the great thing is, remember, you can open up VHDs. So I wouldn't necessarily even have to put this file in place on the original DC. I could just shut down this DC, copy the VHD, open up that VHD and deposit that file. I could copy that VHD five times for five new VMs and put a different clone config file with different settings in through a PowerShell script and then start them all up. It would see it has a new VM generation ID that doesn't match the value in that copy of the database. It would see the clone config file in the C Windows NTDS folder, and it would run a mini sysprep process. It's not a full sysprep, but it's enough to give it new GUIDs and use the values from that file. And now you have brand new domain controllers stood up. Now you may be wondering, well, what if I put this DC clone config file while it's still up and running, and I copy it to that C Windows NTDS folder? What about the original? If I shut this down and then copied it and then start it back up, well, it's going to have a clone config file there. But remember, its VM generation ID would not have changed. If this DC starts up, it sees a DC clone config.xml file in this location, but it has the original VM generation ID in its virtual machine, then it knows it's the original. And it basically just deletes that DC clone config and doesn't do anything with it. So what this has now given you the ability is to quickly clone domain controllers. Additionally, you can run a PowerShell command, get ad dc cloning excluded application list. And this will actually go and do a check of which applications would not be supported by that sysprep process. And these will actually be excluded. And you can then go and customize this. But by default, these will then be excluded and would not go through that sysprep. You then shut this down, copy it, start it back up, and you now have cloned new domain controllers. So what this gives you is a great new way to very, very quickly stand up new DCs. If this domain controller was FISMO role holder for any of them, those clones would lose those roles. It wouldn't try and copy them. 
it would automatically dump any FISMO roles it has as soon as it started up. But essentially now I can clone domain controllers and set them up very, very quickly. So once again, the process, add that source domain controller to the clonable domain controllers group, take that sample file, edit it, or just leave in the blank values, place it in the C Windows NTDS, removing the sample name. You've run the PowerShell to find out which applications and you can customize for XML if you need to. Shut this down, copy the VHD, create new VMs for those copied VHDs, and then start them all up. The original has not got a new VM generation ID, so it won't do anything. It will just delete the clone config file. The copies will see a new VM generation ID. See that DC clone config.xml. If there's values, it will use them. If there isn't, it will generate its own values. You now have new domain controllers stood up very, very quickly. This concludes the lesson on cloning domain controllers.